Now we're going to have a look at how to do setbacks on our site. We used the roof tool in order to be able to create a, a boundary wall or a fence, which is really helping us just to identify our building in our section or our building site in our section. Um, we're going to be using some guidelines. Let's just close this down, this one here. Uh, this is based on Blacktown City Council or the PONS uh, design guidelines. So this is effectively DCP information and it's a checklist. And this is what we're going to be using to do our setbacks. So we need to be able to understand this is a slightly confusing or slightly more complicated site because it's a corner site. So we're going to need to pay attention to the, the primary frontage as well as the secondary frontage. Um, to make it simple, what I'm going to do first, going back into my site, is do this in floor plan. And to do this in floor plan, we could do it in a few different ways. I've already created a, a fill around the site. If I tab, if I press tab while I'm hovering over any element of the project, it will toggle between those different elements. So if I hover over, I've got, I've got a fill, which is representing the site, and I've got the wall. So what I want to do is to choose the fill and I want to then get a polyline. I want to use the offset function and magic wand spacebar and I'm offsetting every one of those boundaries. Now to keep it really simple I'm going to make that 1000. Now what we'll see if we went back to these guidelines, I'm going to have to minimize it so I don't keep having this problem. When we go to these guidelines, we see that it has a 900 millimeter or 0.9 meter side setback. And so we could use that. Now I find it safer, even though 900 is our minimum, um, I'd tend to not do it that way, but to keep it um, at one meter anyway. And I don't really want to have my polyline set up like this that's got all these different dots. So now that I've drawn this, I'm going to redraw it again. And this time I'm going to draw it red just so I can see the difference. And I'm going to change it to a long dash. Now, I'm not going to be able to draw this one in one go again because it's arced. So then I'll grab the middle and stretch it delete the other one and this is going to make it a lot easier to offset now that it's got fewer nodes. So which ones are side, which ones are back? Generally the way it works is when you've got two streets, maybe the, the more arterial road is your primary frontage and the other road is your secondary frontage, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, we can turn on our trace reference. Or you could get away with arguing saying that you get to choose which one's your primary and which one's your secondary. In terms of maximizing the potential of the site, generally you want to have a narrower frontage or primary frontage, which means that you've got a narrower rear setback because the rear setback is bigger than the side setback. So in this case, we're going to say that this one is the side. So we're going to choose our offset edge. And I'm going to make this 100 millimeters smaller we know if we look at that again that the rear setback is four meters so I'm going to offset this one on the right three meters we've got a wrong file we've got a primary setback of 4.5 meters and a secondary setback of three meters So 4.5, we'll add 3500, and we'll add 2 meters. Sorry, 200, let's try that again. So we're left with sort of an awkward situation, and I've looked at a few different uh, projects where what do you do about this corner? Does this corner then have to be chamfered back at three meters as well? Or can you go on a sharp corner like this? 
I don't have an exact answer for you on that, but I will just to be safe. Let's make that a um, a three meter offset as well. So we've got a line. We've got the offset function turned on. I'm drawing a line, and then I'm going to offset it three meters, and then we'll just chamfer that edge to give ourselves a slightly smaller building envelope to design two. So this is our building envelope. Now we could do the same thing to explain this in our section or elevation. Um, I could do it a lot faster rather than drawing lots and lots of walls. In this case, what I could do is just draw a big fat slab. So I'm going to get a slab. I'm going to make it very tall. I'll make it six meters. And I'll probably make it starting about a meter into the ground. And magic wand. Now that slab, we're going to make red, and I'll just add a cover fill to it, just so we can see that a little bit clearer. So now when we go into our section, Let's change this to, I don't really like any of these materials, let's just use this airspace. So now we can see at any point where we're cutting through, we've got our building envelope. Now I don't want to keep this as a slab, that's not going to be helpful. So what I'll do is replace this building envelope with um, a line or a polyline to represent a building envelope. So I'm going to draw a line just directly up Again, I can make that red and dashed if I wanted to. Now I've just chosen any point on the section to cut my section. Um, so this would move, so that's why it would be a good idea to keep this reference for longer, which will help me to identify it later on. But for now it's doing what it needs to. So here we've got our front setback, our rear setback, and this one represents our side setback and our secondary front setback. So then the way that we need to understand this is based on a story. Now who's to say how tall a story is? The DCP has a bit of a bit of something to say about it, but it's not necessarily definitive. We could say that a story is, let's say this red line represents our ground line on the ground floor and then we have maybe three meters floor to floor height. Now of course what's this based on? I've currently got my story set up with the same information so I could move these down onto my story level if I wanted to rather than just being random. And then once I get up to that height I then need to set back another 600, which means from this point I am 1.5 meters to the boundary. Now to represent this, I'll just make this shorter, make this shorter, and then I can join that up. Now if I wanted to, I could delete this slab, but like I said, I probably don't want to do that at the moment. So I might just create a new layer, Control L, and I'll call this building envelope. Turn it off. And now it's always going to be there, but I can go back into my sections and I just see these lines for now. Now the only extra thing that I would probably want to add right at the moment is my maximum height. And we can see here that maximum two stories, maximum 7.2 ceiling, maximum 10 meter ridge. So two stories, that's again up to interpretation. 7.2 meter ceiling, 10 meter ridge. So again, it depends on where I'm saying my ground floor is, but let's just say that this is two stories. So that means that if I'm based on the stories I have currently, that's two stories. If it's based on... Um, 
from the natural ground, which is how they determine height. I'm going to draw a line and then I'm not going to offset it, but I'm going to drag it vertically. 7 to eh, try that again. Drag 10 meters. So that represents my maximum height. And then drag it down to 8. And that represents my maximum ceiling height. So now I'm giving myself defined building envelope to work with. And I could do the same thing in the other one. Some councils will have other requirements uh, that you might find where they say from the boundary, go up 1800 and then come back into the site at a 45 degree angle. Now, this is useful even if it's not necessarily relevant to your site this is a useful tool at helping to understand how shadowing might work so while this rectangular envelope is the requirement for this council um, other councils may have more of a triangular requirement that looks a little bit like what I've just drawn so hopefully this is helpful so you can see how you can use ArchiCAD as a design tool before you even start designing anything just to understand the requirements and how to represent them graphically and then of course the point of this is it can give you a bit of an idea when you're designing you could print this out and start to represent where your building should or could fit there we go